That's right. Take all your numbers and shove them because at the end of the day, huh. we're still talking about humans. So not everything in baseball can be measured by stat cast and on base percentage and weighted runs created plus. So Jenks, one of the factors this week, I think that should be noteworthy for people betting on these games is starting pitchers who might be traded because we've already seen this. We have seen guys on teams who are not contenders put on absolute clinics and what might be their final start with bottom dwelling teams. Most notably last night, Luis Castillo of the Reds inning the seventh inning of a win against the Marlins with three straight strikeouts, really dialing up the heat and probably his final start as a Cincinnati Red. So now the Yankees fans are kind of clamoring. They're like, we want him. He's so shiny. He's so new. We got to have him right now. But we've seen this with other pitchers. Pablo Lopez, who could be traded from the Marlins, 11 strikeouts on Monday. Frankie Montas of the A's, five innings, two earned runs, and a win over the mighty Astros. So, Jinx, do you think this plays a factor in some of these games? Yeah, I do. And maybe it's a coincidence that all of these guys who could potentially be on the trading block suddenly show out right and when we're hearing their names sort of pop up in trade rumors. But I absolutely think, particularly when you're a pro athlete, and we see this all the time in different sports where these guys are the best at what they do. That's the reason why they're pitchers in the majors or why they're starters in the NBA. And when you're at the top of your game or at the top of your craft, you have to constantly find ways, I think, to stay motivated, particularly if you want to perform at a high level uh, the nba does this all the time right these guys are always looking for ways to say oh this guy disrespected me what was the famous line from michael jordan i took that personally i took that personally <laughs> he took everything personally why because he was the best in the world and he needed something to keep him going so he took everything personally so he was always motivated to do his very best each and every night now we're talking about the greatest competitor i think whoever lives so with these starting pitchers they hear their names and they think, you know what? This is the extra motivation. This is this is what I need to go out and just have a little bit extra focus so I can show teams what I can do. And what is more motivating, particularly when you're playing on a bad team and you have the potential to go to a winning team? Because as we know, the ultimate motivation is to win and win at the highest level. For sure. And on the surface of this, I kind of poo-pooed the idea and I said to myself, these are guys who pitch for a living. Like they are motivated each and every start. But if you watch Luis, Luis Castillo last night, he was pitching with a different fire. And maybe the other factor is that he has played for the Reds for five seasons. This is all he has known in the big league. So the fact that he knew it was probably his final start with that organization, I think you get a little juice on your fastball when you know that this is your curtain call. And we saw it. He had three strikeouts, struck out the side in his final inning in a Reds uniform. So how do we take this information to our advantage? Today on the slate, I don't think anybody kind of fits this mold, but over the weekend on Saturday, we have several guys who kind of fit this description. Tyler Molly of the Reds, Paul Blackburn of the A's, Kyle Freeland of the Rockies, and Martin Perez of the Rangers. So our, if you're betting on those games, keep your eye on some of those pitchers who may be, you know, traded for the trade deadline. Uh, this is the Daily Tip presented by BetMGM. I'm Chelsea Semester. He's Michael Jenkins. Right now, let's round the bases and take a look at some of these other headlines when it comes to baseball. First up, we've got Mike Trout. It's not good news because <laughs> he has another injury. <laughs> And the former MVP is on the injured list. Again, the Angels aren't contending. And this is what Mike Trout said. I got back and my phone was blowing up. Said my career is over. That's news to me. It's just that I've got to stay on top of it. It's rare for a baseball player. That's the thing. And I have to stay on top of it. So the bottom line is he has this weird back injury. So now he is going to not be playing, obviously, for the Angels. And I think the bigger storyline here is what's going on with the Angels training staff? How are their star players always hurt? Because doesn't this seem to be the case with Mike Trout? Last year, he tore his calf and was out for, you know, most of the season. They have all of these superstars, but still cannot find a way to even contend in the AL West. They have two MVP candidates. What are they doing, <laughs> Jinx? Well, I agree that Mike Trout in particular has been banged up a lot. However, he has a rare spinal condition. 
So I don't know if you're the training staff, what you can do to prevent that. I just think it's something he's going to have to deal with. The key for the Angels training staff is to make sure he's ready to go. And it sounds like to me that this isn't exactly new. It sounds like he's been dealing with this for a while. The question is, can that Angels training staff prepare him to be ready to play baseball each and every day? So it may take a little bit of extra work, but I'm glad he sort of calmed down all the fears that suddenly his career is over. He can still play baseball. He's going to be fine. He's just going to have to figure out how to manage it. And it sounds like he's going to be able to. If you're playing football, this might be a career ender. But baseball certainly is not the physical sport that football is. So over time, I think he's going to be okay. I think if he were truly concerned, he would have said that. It sounded like to me, listening to how he reacted to this coming out, was that, yes, I know what it is. We're going to deal with it. But it's it's not that big of a deal. It is. I understand that when you're talking about a rare spinal injury, that sounds scary. And it is. But I think this can be dealt with. Here's where I think this is relevant. Because... We also heard a rumor yesterday that teams are inquiring about Shohei Otani. Teams want him. Of course they want him. He's an mm-hmm. MVP candidate. He pitches, he hits, and there are teams that are contending in the postseason that would love to have him on their roster. However, I'm pretty sure the Angels aren't moving him, but do you think if Otani truly wanted out of LA, which you hear these headlines about Mike Trout, you now have kind of seen the franchise and – you know, whether it's fair or not, the Angels front office, like they make big moves, but they haven't sniffed the postseason. If you think Shohei Otani wants out of LA, do you think that there's a way he has moved, whether it's this trade deadline or this offseason? I think there's a possibility, but you're going to have to give up a massive, a massive amount of capital to get Shohei Otani, more so than probably any player in the game, I would say. Maybe Mike Trout is the other guy where you have to give up. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe That's true, too, but Shohei is a different animal. I I think if you're going to make a trade for Shohei Otani, you're going to have to mortgage so much of your future that you better be damn sure that you're going to be able to make a championship run because what's the point of bringing in Shohei if you don't win a World Series, you're not close to it. So I think that's the... It's actually Shohei's immense talent working against him because he's such a unique player, and we've never seen the likes of him really ever in Major League Baseball, which means if you're going to trade for him, we may see a trade that we've never seen the likes of. So it's actually because he's so good, which makes him so difficult to trade. Well, and also, he's so marketable. Think about the international market. Uh, Think about the pull that he has globally. There are so many Otani fans not only here, but across the globe, you know, think about in Asia, like Mm -hmm. how many fans uh, really are drawn to Otani. So I think from a marketing standpoint, it would not be smart for the angels to move him just because he is their main attraction. He's the headliner. Mike Trout is one of the best players in baseball, but people love Otani. That puts butts in the seats. If I ever saw a player that does it, it's Otani.